Mark Hirschberg, it is a pleasure to have you here on the Simplifying Entrepreneurship podcast today. Thanks so much for having me on. Yeah, you know, it's been a little while in the works here, just uh, travel and all that kind of stuff, but it's great to have you on. And, you know, we talked a little bit around your book that you released, The Career Toolkit. And when we first started talking, it's kind of like, well, most of our most of our audience is around entrepreneurship. And you're like, yeah, all the stuff applies. This, this stuff applies. And we're going to dig into how you've sectioned off your book a little bit around leadership and management and communication today. So I'm excited to learn a little bit about how you define leadership, Mark. The best quote I have for defining leadership, particularly because we often get leadership versus management, the yeah. best quote comes from Admiral Grace Hopper, who said, nobody ever managed men into battle. Now, that doesn't tell us what it is, but when you think about it, you start to get a sense of what leadership is about. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not sure how you look at that. Well, why don't you tell me more? Tell me more a little bit about that and, and your thoughts around that quote. There are different schools of thought about where the lines go and leadership is big picture inspirational and management is more tactical and day to day or leadership is the what and management is the how. And you can define it lots of different ways. I see it more as a feeling rather than saying this is technically leadership versus management. Now, I do break it down in the book. We have separate chapters to really get to the essence of each. But at the end of that section, I end by saying good leaders manage, good managers lead. And in our daily lives, we don't say, OK, I'm going to lead for five minutes. I'm going to transition to some management. We do both. So understand both, but don't worry so much about the distinction. Yeah, I love that. I think that's a, a great explanation, especially in this entrepreneurial world where, you know, everything's sort of tied together and we're we're running around doing different things at different times of the day and, and working on our leadership side of things and working in our management side of things for our businesses, because ultimately uh, in an entrepreneurial setting, it's like, we're the, we're the final say in, in a lot of certain circumstances. And from that, Sometimes that's management, right? And other points, it's like leading the team around their accountabilities and working through all that sort of stuff too. Just like as an executive, sometimes I'm saying corporate strategy. Yeah. There have been times I was a guy running out buying toilet paper because <laughs> For we didn't sure. have any in the bathrooms and needed to get done and I'm going to do it. They don't teach that in a leadership training course, but of course, most good leaders intuitively know, hey, I've got to take care of these things, even if that means more menial managerial tasks, that is leadership. You know, Mark, you talk a little bit about the difference between influential leadership and positional leadership. Can you give us a little lowdown on that? This is a view many people have who haven't had any leadership training. When we first think about leadership and the way young children, in fact, think about it, yeah. it comes from authority. Well, I have the title, I am in charge, whether that title is I'm mom and dad or um, the CEO or the VP of whatever, I get to say. Now, that is authority, and you are given certain rights with that authority. I can decide who we hire or fire. I can decide if I'm the CEO where our headquarters will be. But that is different than leadership. And true leadership is not about commanding. It is about inspiring and motivating. And when you think about some of the greatest leaders in the world, think about people like Martin Luther King, he didn't say, I have a dream and you're going to do it because I say so. <laughs> he inspired people over whom he had no authority and got them to follow along in the vision. That is true leadership. And of course, that's what we want on our teams. We don't just want to be, oh, I have to make every decision. I want my team full of leaders, full of people who stand up and take initiative because, hey, that's less work for me. Yeah, it is. And, you know, give me a few other qualities around leader, like leadership and all of that sort of stuff. You were saying around this idea, we want to have more of these kind of people. What does that look like? There are a number of attributes and you'll have people debating this and different business schools debating yeah. it. So here's an exercise you can do at home. Think about your favorite leader. Could be someone you know personally, someone you admire it could even be a fictional character. It doesn't yeah. matter. Think about a few people. You say, these are the leaders I admire and sit down and ask yourself why. What are the qualities? What are the attributes of these leaders? And as you build out that list, 
that's going to tell you something about your own style of leadership, about what you value, what's important. Compare that with other people and ask, hey, what do you value? And you're going to see slightly different lists, which can help you expand your understanding. So there's no one answer, but by reflecting, we can get a better understanding of our own view of leadership. Yeah, and that helps you build team culture and, and corporate culture as well around your business because ultimately, as entrepreneurs, we own the business. So for the most part, we're setting culture too, right? Absolutely. And culture, by the way, it's not the four values you list on your website. It's the day-to-day -day things that right. actually happen in the company that no one actually writes about. And it's important to get those right. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you mentioned having the right answers isn't always necessary. And this again, yeah, it, it's another view that a lot of younger, less experienced leaders have. They think, well, I'm, I'm in charge. I have to know what to do. And it comes from an antiquated view of leadership. If you think back 100 years ago, when we were a manufacturing organization, okay, you turn the screws, you hammer. Yeah. Hey, I need you to hammer faster. I need you to do this. I have to know more than you and I can command you about what you're doing or let me show you how to paint better. Today, think about a CMO, a chief marketing officer who says, okay, I know we have to be on TikTok. I'm 50 years old. Get the 23 year old. Exactly. Tell me this TikTok thing. Explain what's trending. Should we do it this way or that way? They don't always know more. We as leaders don't know more. And certainly as a CEO, you don't know more about engineering than your CTO, more about finance than your CFO, more about sales than your, your head of sales. They're going to know more than you, and that's okay. And your job isn't to say, well, I know better, and I'm going to tell each of you what to do. It's how can I get us together to find the answers? And that's true at the CEO level, at the executive level, even at the managerial level, no matter what level. Hey, team, we have to get the answers. My job is to help us get it not to tell you what to do. Communication is such an important part of leadership. And, you know, I just, I talk a lot about communication and setting up frameworks and creating clarity around the ideas so that you can communicate them in simpler ways. I mean, that's, that's the idea around simplifying entrepreneurship is that we take things that are hard and complex and break them down into uh, easier ways to describe things through models so that we can actually communicate them in an easier way. And can you, can, can you provide some examples around how you found in your work that you've done at MIT and all the other different people that you've worked with around where leaders had issues in communication? Let's look at one of the most fundamental communication challenges we all suffer from. Imagine if right now you had to pitch a new idea, maybe it's to some investors or a client, and you knew this person was incredibly left-brained. Yeah. I think of, for example, Sheldon from Big Bang Theory. <laughs> okay, you have to pitch to Sheldon. How would you do that presentation? You would have a very logical, well-thought-out PowerPoint presentation, and you'd have your points and your sub-points and sub-sub-points, and you'd go through it in a very orderly fashion. And that's great. That's what Sheldon wants. That's what that person wants. Now imagine you're pitching the same idea to someone who is that classic scatterbrained artist, really visionary. If you start in in that same PowerPoint presentation, you're going to lose that person in about 30 seconds. And it's not just, oh, well, PowerPoint or no PowerPoint. Just doing the, I have a 13 point presentation with sub points and sub sub points. No, you're going to sell them emotionally. You're going to sell them on the vision, the big picture, some other way. Now, that's a very trivial example of left brain and right brain people, but by understanding different people, how they think, we can choose to communicate in that particular language, that framework that resonates with that audience. And by doing so, we make communication much easier. By failing to do so, we're practically speaking different languages. Yeah, you know, I, I, I come, I'm in complete alignment there, Mark. And it's the this idea, and I know you're a speaker as well, but the idea around knowing your audience before you communicate, whether you're speaking to your team, whether you're speaking to your client, whether you're speaking to your suppliers, or whether you're speaking to an audience of, of other people out there, understanding who that audience is as we roll into whatever it is we're trying to communicate is such an important piece, isn't it? 
exactly right. And when we don't do it, the analogy I use, imagine if I go off to China. Now, I don't speak Cantonese or Mandarin, so I have to get an interpreter, or I would have them say, well, you speak English, you knew this, so I'm going to make you do the work. And my entire audience has to sit there and take everything I say and translate it in their head, and I'm asking them to do extra work, and I'm taking away their attention from the actual message. So instead, I want to make it easier for them, remove all that extra work so they can focus on the core message. Yeah, no, I think it's such an important piece. One of the other things that that I wanted to dig into is um, the idea around, and people talk about this a lot, are you an extrovert? Are you an introvert? How do I communicate if I'm an extrovert? Well, most people who are extra extroverts just blather it out. You know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm an expert or ex expert. I'm an extrovert and, and I don't have a problem usually getting what I want out. But for those people who are introverted leaders, What's your suggestion for communication and betterment around that where they, they may feel as though they aren't as good a communicator and they may be a great communicator, but they may not feel that way. What, how do you suggest they go about being a better communicator as a leader? One of the important skills we see time and again on lists of what people look at in leaders is listening skills. Yeah. And that's where introverts really have an edge. Because if you put two extreme extroverts in a room together, they're both just going to start talking and talking over each other. And introverts will right. sit there and listen and let other people speak, even sometimes by being quiet and someone else wants to fill the noise and they share more than they may have expected to or planned to. And so listening is a great skill. And if you're an introvert, use that skill. In fact, being more succinct with our communication can be powerful. I remember back in my fraternity house, back at MIT, we had, we'd have a meeting every month. We'd all get together. And I used to have my list of bullet points and everything I'd say. And I was one of the more talkative people. And there was a guy who was always very quiet. He wound up becoming a diplomat, always very quiet. But when he spoke up, everybody listened to him because they knew if he has something to say, it's important. So by speaking less, the words we choose can become more powerful. Yeah, I love that. And that that's not only for introverts. <laughs> that that can that's a good lesson for extroverts too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Mark, it's been a real pleasure having you here on the Simplifying Entrepreneurship Podcast. And before we go, I want to let everyone know how they can get a hold of the career toolkit, your book. And also, I understand you have a new update to your app. So the way you can get the book, you can go to thecareertoolkitbook.com. There you can see where to buy the book, Amazon, other places. You can touch with me or follow me on social media. There's new articles every week. And there is a free resources section with a whole bunch of free downloads and links to online resources, including programs like the Career Toolkit Development Program, which can upskill your entire team completely free. So all of that is at thecareertoolkitbook.com. Awesome. Now, I also have an app. Brain Bump. We first created the Career Toolkit app because I know when you read a book like mine, you say, okay, great book, lots of good advice, and you forget it two weeks after you finish reading it. Well, you want to retain that, and this app is designed to help you retain it. It basically can be opened when you need it. Oh, I'm going into a networking event. What are those networking tips? Pull it up, go through those tips. Or you set it at a time each day where it just does a push notification. Some of the advice we talked about today or in the book is going to pop up and you go, all oh, right, good point. Listen more as a leader. Swipe. And that helps to keep it top of mind. Love now, it. Brain Bump has content not just for my book, but other books, podcasts, blogs, classes, and talks. And you can pick the content you want and help it stay top of mind. So that's at Cognosco Media, C-O-G-N-O-S-C-O media.com. Go to Brain Bump there, and it's available for free on the Android and iPhone stores. Awesome. Awesome. Well, that's one I'm definitely going to be downloading after we chat here today. Love that. That's uh, It's been great having you on today, Mark, and really appreciate the time you spent with us and taught us through this different thing all around leadership and communication. We battle with it every day as leaders, and it's always good. Even some of this stuff, people, we just need to hear it again, right? You yep. need to hear it again as leaders because like even you said, I need even, to hear it 
Keep it top of mind. And and that's like brain bump. That's what that's doing, right? It's just pulling it back up as top of mind. Exactly right. Right on. Well, thanks so much and make it a great day, Mark. Thanks for having me.